my name's Otis, and um, first of all, I'd like to thank um, Judy for inviting me. I feel really um, humbled to be in front of you. I almost feel unworthy to be in the, uh, on the panel of these people. Uh, but thank you for giving me this opportunity. So today I want to talk about um, popular culture and education in mathematics. So um, a little bit about me. So in high school, I liked playing this Chinese instrument called the Erhu. And um, I was always, um, I did it for music in the HSC, and I was always really passionate about my music. And I thought, oh, um, how can I integrate um, this part of my life with this part of my life, which is mathematics. And um, first of all, in terms of like talking, giving like a bit of a springboard of what I want to talk about, I'm going to play a little bit of an excerpt of um, something that I'm really also really passionate about. And if you recognize this song, um, I think you're not studying enough for all the undergrads. So it goes like this. <laughs> so who recognizes that? Yeah. Um, so for those people that don't know that, that's um, a theme song from Game of Thrones. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I kind of wanted to. I use a lot of my time watching Game of Thrones. The part that yeah. Um, so um, this is the kind of lesson I wanted to share with everyone. I actually kept it in original form when I wrote it in um, second year, and I'm currently in my fourth year now. And um, so you can see that it uses, um, it uses the old syllabus. So um, I'm trying to teach um, like cost, price, profit, things like that. And I wanted to try and use a creative way to integrate music into teaching this subject. So um, I'm going to play a little bit of an excerpt of something else I'm really passionate about, which is um, the voice. <laughs> and, um, how can I get the audio up? <laughs> okay, so quickly jumping back to my presentation. So as you all know, um, the um, the voice second season is coming out soon, or like the second third season. Anyways, yes, the um, so that's something I really like. I enjoy watching, and I'm sure a lot of people in the audience can relate to it, and also Game of Thrones and things like that. So um, I'm trying to think of a way, so I'm in this point where, okay, I love music, love my popular media, how do I integrate that into maths? And um, so I kind of thought about using um, like a bit of a springboard. Let's talk about um, Delta Stress, okay? <laughs> Made by Lisa Ho, right? And I'm thinking, oh, okay, Delta Stress before she wore it was about $50. Now after the show, she's worn it just because she's on stage, it's become $250. How does this relate to how, how much profit has she made? Things like this. Um, and I also wanted to, <laughs> it's the most out there, it's kind of not parallel, but if you think of like bouncing off the creativity part, yeah, I feel like, um, yeah, this is what really inspired me. So I kind of use um, like the Bloom's taxonomy thing that we've been talking about in um, that equitable education thing. Um, when we talk about, okay, so first of all, very simple questions like what is the cost of the outfit? How much is it selling for? What is the profit? But then we can delve a little bit deeper and think about, um, uh, things that I'm passionate about, like that's such as like what, why, why does marketing exist in the world, and how does that influence people's thinking, and really relate that back down to their lives. Um, so there's a lot of um, so I, I just it's like well, I remember when I was driving to Prague um, in the morning. It took me an hour to go to um, from where I live, and I always used to listen to Carl and Jackie O which is um, the most, you know, not to say their, <laughs> um, the quality of their work or anything, but it, it allowed me to keep up, up to date with what's going on really in society, in a, in a sense. And, um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Um, so, why I'm doing this, and I'm sure that everyone has their phone right now, and then on their Facebook, you know, they're scrolling up and down. So next time um, I suggest you, you, in the next 20 minutes or so, you probably do this, when you scroll up and down on your update, think about um, a way that you can integrate what you see on your newsfeed into your teaching. So I find that it develops a bit of a commonality between your students, um, and it brings, uh, brings the lives of students and teachers into a classroom that harnesses greater engagement. I, that's, uh, I felt that during practice, what I could, 
uh, really relate to my students because I was talking about the voice or I was talking about so thinking and dance. And um, yeah, and it provides this sense of belonging in a society. And I hope that even like a subject like mathematics, um, I will be able to address issues that directly affect the lives of my students and be a part of the development of students that think critically about their world that they live in. So not just think about how mathematics really relates to their lives. And um, on a final note, uh, this is something I created for my um, <laughs> I created for uh, my student <laughs> presentation. So um, how do we do this one? Can anyone have a clue? Not in my curriculum class. Bearings. Bearings. Could maybe. Um, what about? So this is how I did it. So what about um, intersection between two lines? Um, like a radio signal from one uh, one country and the, another radio signal from one country is the exact location. And each, each group is given one small piece of information and they're to trade that piece of information and pass it on. You know, and then they can find out how they do that. I don't know, just bouncing off things like this. And um, this is something I found online. If you, um, thank you for having me.